I'm quite sure that you are <laughs> sick to death of my asking you whether you are pregnant every time I meet you. I am not that at all. I'm just disappointed I can't give you an affirmative answer. Well, these things can't be rushed, darling. We must just learn to be patient and let nature take its course. Lila, um, while we have this time alone, I'd like to ask you something. Well, of course, dear. What is it? Well, it's, it's about Tracy. It just seems to me, Lila, that she... That she's terribly threatened every time Alan or I mention having children. I mean, so much so that... Well, I, I've used that sometimes just to shut her up. It always works. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it does. How very clever of you to think about it. Well, Alan thinks it's because of their, their grandfather's trust fund. But Lila, really, I mean, could it be that important to her? I'm afraid so, Monica. Of course, there's a great deal of money involved, but I think it goes even deeper with Tracy. Because with or without the fund, neither she nor Ned will ever have to worry about money. Well, then why the fixation? Oh, it's in her nature, I suppose. You see, from the day that her son was born, Tracy has been convinced that she'd start supervising that fund as soon as Ned was 12 years old, according to the terms of my father-in-law's will. And what Tracy wants, Tracy means to have. I've never said this to anyone before, and I feel a little disloyal about saying it now, so you mustn't ever repeat it. No, no, of course not. Well, I have always been convinced that it was Tracy who tried to break up Alan and Grace Dobson just before they were married. How? Oh, by dropping little hints to Alan that uh, Grace was really only using him in order to get revenge on her first husband. Oh, Lila, that's awful. Well, Tracy is very much like her paternal grandfather in that respect. She'll stop at nothing to get what she wants once she's made up her mind that she really wants it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, now with uh, Mitch Williams. Oh, you mean that assistant district attorney that she brought to the party? Mm-hmm, yeah. That seems to be her latest objective. Excuse me, Bobby. Was Jeff Weber still on duty at the hospital when you left? Uh, yeah, he was just coming out of surgery. Good. The reason I ask is because this is the assistant district attorney, Mitchell Williams, and he needs to speak to him about something. Hello, Mr. Williams. It's nice to meet you. How do you do, Bobby? Okay, thanks. I've, uh, I've heard a lot about you. Bobby, he needs to speak to him about something very important. Uh, I guess we'll wait for him here, huh? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think I'll go call Jeff right now so we can connect when he's ready. Will you excuse me? Sure. Why don't I wait for you over here, okay? Okay. okay. Good. Nice to meet you, Bobby. Same here. Now, I wish you would please stop bothering me. Hey, hey! What? What, 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 what's the matter? Nothing. Well, what are you staring at? Is there a back way out of this place? Yeah, sure. Where is it? You go down that hall, past the banquet rooms, yeah, and it's okay. an exit in... Hey, there you are. Hi, Mitch. Listen, I was just trying to get you to the hospital. Uh, yeah, listen, uh, will you excuse me? I don't mean yeah. to be rude, but I gotta catch, uh, Cal Jameson. Jameson? Yeah, yeah, I'm supposed to meet him here, and I don't want to lose him this time. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, I didn't see you sitting there. You looking for Heather? Heather, no. No, I'm not. Oh. Oh, listen, Bobby. Do you ha uh, happen to remember a guy who came to visit me in the hospital not too long ago? What guy? Well, you called and told me that he had arrived, then you sent him up to the seventh floor. And later on, you told me that uh, Heather had seen him but didn't know who he was. His name was Cal Jameson. Does that ring a bell? Um, yeah, Jameson, yeah, yeah, I, I remember him. Why? Well, he called me about ten minutes ago and uh, said he was over here and we were supposed to meet, but I haven't seen him here yet. Uh, you didn't happen to see him, did you? Gee, no, Jeff, I'm afraid not. But um, I was having dinner with uh, Jesse and Dan. I just came over here a few minutes ago to talk to somebody. Somebody uh, that I knew. Yeah, well, I just thought you might have. There's no particular reason why you should have. You look a little upset about something. Yeah, I am. 
Well, I just have to find them, that's all. Oh, Jeff, I remember now posting all of those messages from you about paging you the minute that he called. Is, uh, is he somebody very important in your life? Yeah, well, he is at the moment. But, uh, listen, I can't explain it to you right now. It's too complicated. All I can tell you is that it's very important that I see him tonight. Well, gee, Jeff, I wish I could help. That's okay, Bobby. Thanks, anyway. I, um... I'll see you at the hospital tomorrow, okay? Hope you find him. Yeah, I hope so, too. Thanks, buddy. Hello there. Hey, Susan. Got quite a little crowd in here tonight. Oh, we have been busy all day long. Did you get to the game? Mm-hmm, sure did. How was it? That's pretty good. Good second half. Um, sorry I had to work. I would have liked to see it myself. Yeah? I mm -hmm. know you were a football fan. Oh, I love all sports. Outdoor, indoor. <laughs> I have to admit, I was a little surprised to see you walk in here with Tracy Quartermain tonight. Oh, yeah, I ran into her at the game. Thought I'd ask her out for a drink, that's all. Well, I was just a little surprised, that's all. After you were so noncommittal with her on the phone earlier today. Yeah, purely social, you know. Run into a lot of people at these social gatherings. There's no point in being standoffish. Why are you staring at Jeff that way? Oh, he's uh, supposed to run into this character, Jameson, tonight. And I'm just seeing, I don't think he's made contact with him yet. You mean Jameson is actually in here? Uh -huh, that's what Jeff said. And uh, said that he might be here. I'm just keeping an eye out, you know, because if he does come here, I'm going to intercept him right here on the spot. You mean you're going to arrest him? No, not personally. But I'm going to have him arrested. I've got Lou Hollister coming right down here, and he's going to do the honors for me. But I don't understand. What has he done? A good many things, apparently. I remember that police report that I wanted. Well, I saw Ramsey at the game today, and he said that there was indeed a record. Well, what did it say, Mitch? Well, apparently this guy Jameson is wanted on several counts, including forgery, passing counterfeit money. You're kidding. No. Well, then he really is a criminal. He certainly is, and I was going to tell Jeff about it, but then uh, he rushed in here and didn't get a chance. I can't believe it. I think Jeff's going to be glad now that I went ahead and sent out for that official request before he asked you to tell me not to bother with it. Oh, he's, he's coming over now. Because she wants to... Please don't say anything about that to Jeff just yet, all right? About what? Well, about my telling you to forget about the report. What are you talking about? Well, actually, it was Heather who asked me to tell you that. And, uh, well, if Jeff goes back and tells her, it might cause some trouble between them, and I just don't want to be the cause of any of that right now. I think we better talk about this later. Okay. Now, Mitch, listen, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to brush you off when I came in, but I wanted to find that guy as soon as I could. Any luck? No, I haven't seen him around here anywhere. Hi, Susan. Hi, Jeff. I understand you're looking for Jameson. Yeah. Yeah, he's supposed to be here. Okay, well, when did you last hear from him? Oh, it couldn't have been more than ten minutes ago. He called me at the hospital and uh, said he was over here and that he'd wait until I got here. That's strange. Yeah, it sure is. Well, looks like the old guy's up to his old tricks again. Like hanging up on me and not being where he tells me to call him back. I'm telling you, Mitch, I can't figure this one out. And the funny thing about it is, when I talked to him, he really sounded desperate. Like he really wanted to talk to me tonight. Well, what, what did you do? Did you say something? Did you do something that might have scared him off? No, no. Well, I, I had to tell him that I didn't have the cash he wanted. Who knows, maybe that's why he skipped out on me. Okay, look, there's something you gotta know. You're not dealing with a two-bit con man. This guy's a pro and it goes way back. How do you know that? I just talked to Ramsey at the game. Remember, I had the police request for, the, for a report. Well, he just got the first report today. Mitch, what did it say? Okay, the guy's got a record he's wanted in the state. The name Jameson, it's one of several aliases he's been using in a long, long career of criminal life. And I wish, I wish he was here now, I wish I could nab him right now. Why, could you arrest him yourself? No, no, I couldn't arrest him myself. I've got Hollister coming down here. And, uh, I gotta go call him. I gotta go call him now and tell him to uh, save himself a trip. Yeah, good. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. Boy, this thing just gets worse and worse all the time. <laughs> tell me about it. You're uh, not gonna mention anything about this to Heather now, are you, Jeff? Susan, I have to tell her. But she'll be frightened. 
I don't want her to be upset, not now that she's pregnant. When she hears that Jameson is a known and wanted criminal, it will scare her to death. And then you know she's going to tell you not to go on any further with the investigation. Yeah, yeah, I guess you will, huh? I'm sure of it. I mean, I've known Heather for a long time, and I think I can predict her reactions pretty well. Yeah, I, I, I guess you're right, Susan. I don't suppose there's much point in telling her about it right away, since it turned out to be a dead end. No, there isn't. So why didn't you just try to spare all the worry you can? And... Yeah. Well, I missed him. Man. He's on his way. It's too bad. It might be a good idea if you stuck around here until Jameson shows up. Because uh, nobody knows what he looks like, and the police photographs aren't in yet. Uh, you could identify him for us. So could you do us that favor? I don't mind doing that. But I don't want you guys to move in until I've got that information he claims to have about my son, all right? Okay, okay. It's a deal. All right. Just hope he shows up. Yeah, let's hope. Well, as long as we've got to wait, why don't we do it at the bar? At least we can sit down and be more comfortable. Yeah, fine. Hello, Luke. Bobby? Is that you? Yes! Well, what do you know? I didn't expect to hear from you again so soon. All that time you've been back to Port Charles, you never called Where's me once. Oh, Luke, that's why I'm calling. I ran into somebody tonight who remembers me from when I was staying with Cousin Lorraine in Jacksonville. Did you? Well, like I always said, baby, it's a small world. Luke, don't kid around. I'm frightened and I need some advice on what I'm going to do about this. You're really all shook up about it, aren't you? Yes. Well, look, if it's all that serious, why don't you come over here? We'll talk to it. I'm, I'm at the floating rib, and I'm having dinner with Jesse Brewer and Dan Rooney. That's the, the lady that well, I look, if you're all I... tied up, forget no. it. No! Okay, I'll make some kind of excuse, and I'll get away. But wait for me, because I really need to talk to you, Luke. Hi. Dad's on the phone, but he said he'd join us as soon as he gets through. Who's he talking to? I don't know, but it's some kind of business deal. Oh, as if I had to ask. It's business 24 hours of the day with Edward. Oh, dear, I do wish I could get him to slow up a little. Or at least agree to a vacation. He's working all the time now, and he does so need to rest up. Well, I try to talk to him about it, but he won't listen to me. So, what were my two favorite girls discussing all this time? Our favorite man. Weren't your ears burning? Why do you think I came in? I was hoping you were drawn by my magnetic attraction. Oh, well, that goes without saying. No, it doesn't. I'd like to hear it. All right, I was drawn by your magnetic attraction. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, that's all taken care of. Sorry, darling, I had to be so long. Well, from the look in your eyes, I can see that the deal you got went through. <laughs> it did indeed, and at a much better price than I'd even hoped for. You see, it goes on all around the park. Business, 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 night and morning, Sundays and holidays. <laughs> well, at least you can't accuse me of being selfish. At this point in my life, it's all for Tracy and Alan, anyway. You don't have to do that on my account, Dad. You know that. I've got all I'll ever need. Believe me, I would much rather see you retire and enjoy life for a while. Work is my life, Alan. If I retired, I'd die of boredom. Oh, that doesn't say very much for me, does it? Oh, now, don't be hypersensitive, darling. You know what I mean. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid I do. Well, how's that sister of yours? How's she doing? Fine. Still excited about her job? Oh, well, she seems to be. That and our assistant district attorney seem to be her chief interest at the moment. I think Tracy's finally met her match with this Mr. Williams. I assume that he's the reason she didn't fly up here with the two of you for the holidays. I'm pretty sure it is. Even though she insisted it was because of all the work that she had to do. I must say, I still don't see what the attraction is. Well, I tried to explain it to you, Monica. That evening I flew up there for the groundbreaking ceremonies. But perhaps you would have had to have seen Tracy through her four disastrous marriages to really understand it. Well, then I would think she would be more careful with future relationships. But I was with her when she first met Mitch Williams, and uh, one look, and it was like an electric shock. Ever since Tracy's been a little girl, she's had to look for the challenge in everything. Schools, games, friendships, business investments, everything. No man she's ever met or been interested in has offered her much of a challenge beyond the original conquest. But I think this Williams does. Because what I've seen of him, he's always looking for a challenge of his own. I think that's a pretty fair statement. Well, it's pretty obvious. Take his profession, politics. 
constant challenge and competition. No, I'd say that he and Tracy are two of a kind. Oh, yes. I think Williams will test a metal all right. And if dear little Tracy is looking for a challenge, I think she's met one in him. <laughs>